All right, guys. All right, there we go. All right, guys. So today we'll be going over trail lines. Um, trail lines are pretty much supporting resistance. They're just a different type of supporting resistance. So, so far to finish off this, uh, just supply and demand supporting resistance kind of phase of the mentorship, we got to end it with trail lines. Trail lines act as supporting resistance the same way. So some characteristics that you want to have when uh, making uh, trail lines is number one, you want at least three touches to be a valid trail line, right? That's number one. So put that in your notes. To be a valid trail line, you want at least three touches, right? The reason why you want three touches is because, you know, with trail lines, you can, a lot of people can just randomly draw random trail lines, right? Anybody can just get in here and connect two points, right? So if you want to be, you know, a lot more accurate with them, you want the more touches, the better, right? This isn't like supply and demand where the more touches, the weaker it gets, right? We want the more touches. Uh, somebody said link still is working. Yeah, the link is working. The new link is working. So first, um, let's go start with an easy trail line real quick. Let's just go on AMD, right? So when you're drawing trail lines, right, like I said, the first thing you want to do is start with three touches. So we're looking at three points where price aggressively, keyword, where price aggressively reacted to. If you're starting to notice a trend, guys, when we're saying uh, supply and demand, we're, when we're looking for imbalance, we're looking for a aggressive move, right? We're looking for aggressive imbalance, an aggressive move down. When we're drawing support and resistance, it's the same exact way. We're looking for an aggressive move at, to make our key points. So what do you think it is with trend lines? It's going to be the same thing. Anything that you do as far as trading, it has to be an actual reaction when it comes to these levels, right? It has to be a clear reaction. All that choppy stuff that people be doing, that's not a clear reaction, right? So right here, let me zoom in for you guys. Oh, hold on. I know I'm kind of slow when it comes to trading people. So right here, we had three touches, right? Uh, hold on, this one a little different. Hold on, this is a little harder trail line. Hold on. Okay, there we go. So it ain't gonna always be pretty, right? So when we go here, we have one touch right here, two touches, and then we have that third touch, and then we have that breakdown, right? Now, I'm gonna have that question where, Jay, what about the wicks, right? Why, why are you piercing in the wicks? Guys, trend lines are never gonna be perfect. You're never gonna get price to react immediately off of it. Overall, we're just looking for clear bounce points, right? It hit this trend line, it reacted, and it bounced. That's what we're looking for. Don't overcomplicate trend lines. Now, a lot of you guys, what you do wrong is, you make channels, right? This is what I see a lot of people do. Last time I did a class over this, people focusing more on channels or stuff like that. Guys, don't focus on channels, right? Focus on drawing one line at a time, right? So for here, we're drawing one line uh, at a time. We're not trying to connect the tops, right? We're in a downtrend, right? We want to see stuff like this, corrections, and then continue the downtrend. So focus on that type of trail line. So how do you make trades based off of trail lines? Like, why are trail lines even important? The reason why they're important is they provide trading opportunities. So for here, we had different trading opportunities. So right here, we had the bounce, the bounce. So when we have these bounces, we know that once it break this trend line, we can take puts and ride it down. Now, I'm going to give you all a little hidden gem right here. If you did your support and resistance correctly, your, your levels, like these levels right here, where the trend line bounced on the way down should be the same levels going away um, so I'm getting tongue twisted. So basically what I'm trying to say is the levels that it bounced off of, if you did your support and resistance levels correctly, those should be your price targets on the way down, if that makes sense. So let's go draw some support and resistance real quick so you can kind of see how it all makes sense. So right here, we have a, a, a support level right here. As you can see, price came here. It bounced aggressively off of, right? So when we broke down, what did we do, right? We came right back to that point that served as what we call a magnet, right? So let's do the same thing for the next one, right? Right here around this area, 
Hold on. Around this area is another support and resistance level, a key level, right? It came here, bounced pretty hard off that level, right? So now when it broke down, what did it do? It came back and retraced those levels, right? So that is why, you know, having trade lines with support and resistance, like having all of those things help you make better quality trades and have better price targets, right? So now when we add the candlesticks back, there we go. So now look how look how respected this level was. Because look, once it broke down, what did it do? It broke this level, right? And what did it do? This is how you know if your levels are good. It broke the level, and what did it do? It retested that level and broke down again, right? That is, look how it did it on the money, guys. This is why I'm telling you, if you're not making your support and resistance levels the way I taught you, you're doing it wrong, right? Because this is money. It literally broke it, hit it, retested it, gave you another trade and opportunity. So... That is why I tell you guys to do that. So trade lines are very important because they provide trading opportunities. Now, let me show you something that traders do wrong. Now, there's a such thing as you want your trade lines at a certain angle, right? When you're making trade lines, you don't want them too steep, right? Some of you guys draw trade lines that are way too steep like this, right? If price action is acting like something like this, you're way too steep, guys. You want a nice angle, right? nice angles right we can have trade lines go straight we can have them go down you see how none of these are steep right they're nice angles and that helps you identify them right so for this one technically yes i would say you can count that as a trade line but honestly guys i'm going to teach you like the way to do it the right way kind of so like yeah somebody would count this as a trade line you know this is a little uptrend or whatever then it broke down but can anybody tell me why I don't really like this trend line too much? Let me zoom in real quick because I know I got a bigger monitor. So can anybody tell me why I don't like this trend line too, too much? Put it in the um, Minty's floor. Why don't I like this trend line too, too much? It's not as aggressive, right? It's kind of choppy. It don't really give you any, you know, like really no real trading opportunity, if you know what I mean, right? Versus something like this, where it gave you a clear trading opportunity. It gave you money in between these bounces. And then when it broke, it gave you more. For here, it was just kind of too steep. I don't really like trade lines like that, right? You want impulsive moves off these levels. So let's go to the next one. And these are going to take some time to practice trail lines, guys. But I want you to not get into a habit. I see a lot of you guys try to connect them, right? If we're in a downtrend, guys, focus on trail lines that are in a downtrend, right? When you're in a downtrend, the trail lines that you should see is, so let's say that, let me draw my pen real quick. Let me get my pen real quick. So let's say that we're in a downtrend, right? The only trend lines you want to see is these correction trend lines to go down, continue to go down, right? Those are the trend lines that you want to focus on. Hold on, let me delete that. So don't get too much into drawing channels. I see people draw that too many times, right? We're not drawing channels, guys. We're drawing simple trend lines and keep it simple, right? Let me go find a different one. And I'm going to get into the more advanced trend lines in a minute, but here go another one, right? Is this a good trend line right here? I'm not gonna get into the advanced ones yet. Hold on. I get into those in a minute. You have advanced trail lines, you got regular. Is this a good trail line right here, guys? This one right here. Yes, right? The reason why is because it's reacting aggressively off of that. Now, I wanted to show you this because you have two different types of trail lines. So you have trend line breaks that what happens is they do a break and retest. So we broke, retested the trend line, then broke down. And then you have trend lines like this one over here where we broke the trend line and we just broke down. So understand that. Now, I know the next question is going to be, Jay, how do I know if it's going to break and retest or if it's just going to break down? You don't know, right? Just know if you took puts, right? If you took puts, and then you start seeing price react, like you're going to see, like this is on the um, hourly. So if you're trying to take puts on the trail line break, the quickest way to tell if it's going to actually be a retest is the easiest thing. If price is refusing to go lower, that'd be the problem with a lot of traders that I see from time to time is when they're in a trade 
and the trade is just like, have you ever been in a trade where it, it just was taking too long? Like, we know not to try to time, you know, try to put a timeline on plays to play out, but have you ever been in a trade where you just catch yourself just waiting a little too long? Like, you like, damn, like it's really taking a hard time to really go lower or stuff like that. So, if you in those type of situations, especially on the trail line break, you can more than likely say, hey, this is probably going to be a break and retest and then take my entry. And most of the time, that is what happens, right? That's why, for me, I personally just cut the trade when I see stuff like that, right? For example, we took AT&T yesterday. Uh, people were saying, like, Jay, why did you uh, sell AT&T when, you know, we were, we were barely in profit or it barely moved? The reason why was, to me, we know that AT&T is a slow stock. I understand that. But at the same time, to me, it just was taking a little bit too long, like, it didn't really want to break down. So that's just an indication to me to just cut the trade, win or loss, and look for re-entries rather than trying to hold it and try to keep it going down. For example, um, a great example of this, and I'm not coming for nobody plays, guys. I know how people get. But a play that I've seen recently was in Blueprint, you know, they were trying to short GIS. And they've been trying to short it for a minute, and it just keep refusing to go lower, right? They were trying to put uh, do puts on it. And that's why I say in trades like that, I kind of just leave it alone because it's no point because it's going to most likely it's going to be like a type of retest type of trade or some kind of stuff like that. So it's better to just wait for better entries. So that's that. And we just keep coming in here, guys. You just keep coming in here trying to find trail lines. You know, you're going to get better at them. Some people draw the weirdest trail lines ever. You know, we just looking for quality trail lines. And if you can't find them, guys, move on. Right. Too many people. Um, too many people try to, you know, force things. If you if it ain't clear to you, then it ain't there, right? So let's go to another one. So uh, let's go to, let's see. And you just go around here and you pretty much can find plenty of trail lines. Like you shouldn't, you shouldn't run out of, you know, finding opportunities. So right here, we have a nice little trail line on Tesla, right? We have a nice little trail line on Tesla. Um, pretty much aggressive moves every time it hits it. Like I said, not every trail line is not going to be perfect, right? If you're looking for a perfect trail line, that's totally fine. You can do that, but not every trail line is going to be perfect. As you can see, we're reacting, 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 reacting. We can break down a little bit, but overall, we're reacting to the stock, right? Here go another one right here. This is a good one right here. Boom. Is that three touches? Yep. One two, three, right? And then it broke down. So that is how, you know, you're looking for, here goes a regular trail line. This is kind of, I don't, I don't, I, when I draw trail lines, I kind of draw them like, you know, vertical or whatever. But um, this will be just a regular support level for me. But if you want to draw it as a trail line, that's totally fine. There's no right or wrong way. Um, I'm looking for some more for you guys, just so you guys can kind of get, here go a bigger trail line, right? Right, we got three touches, one, two, three, then boom, boom, there we go. And that's all I'm, all I'm saying is we're finding trading opportunities off of these trend lines. Um, a, a good trend line that helped me was CBX. So, and I hope I'm not going fast or for anybody, but like right here, where was it at? Hold on. Well, this was one, a big one, right? Yeah, I see that big trail line, right? And then also they can, trail lines can turn into patterns or whatever. But overall, we had a clear trail line. Once it broke down, it's broke down, right? And we using those key levels, right? Let's go back. I'm trying to get you to understand that every class that we go over gives you, you know, it helps you for the next uh, step, right? That's one key level right there, right? That's a turning point key level, right? Another key level here. I'm trying to get you guys to use last classes to put it into these classes, right? Come here again, right? We're looking for big turning points, right? So now when we add the candles back, there we go. Look, those same levels that you had, those key levels, what did price do? It came straight to those key levels, guys. And that is how, you know, you using what we learned in last class. And now we're starting to put everything all together. Now, I know I'm gonna have that question. Jay, what time frame do we trade trend lines off of? 
And the question to that is any time frame. I keep telling people, don't limit yourself to a certain time frame, right? You can find time frames on the 15 minute, the hourly, two hour, three hour, four hour, daily, weekly, whatever time frame that you want to use. Guys, trend lines are there. You can just base your trade off of it. So like right now we're on an hourly chart. So for us to take, you know, a sell position, right, on the break of this trend line, is what we will probably do is we will probably come down maybe for an hourly we might come down to the 15 minute time frame and see what is it doing is it showing some type of bearish uh context that's going to tell us that we're breaking down this trend line like there's different ways to do it right now on this particular class i am going to need some feedback guys so i'm gonna have to um ask you is there any questions so far on trend lines the simple ones because i do kind of need feedback um do i always do the one hour chart no i use any time frame it's just the one hour chart is kind of like my go-to chart so i see a lot of my trading opportunities on the one hour right so we always draw trail lines at the bottom of price move it i'm gonna show you the uh the bottom and the down so right now i've been doing uh up in price let's go do a down one real quick before i uh get to the next question so amd we can go back to amd so actually, we've seen this a lot this week um, with a lot of stocks. So let's go to AMD. It was on their daily time frame, right? So actually, let's go to Facebook. This was one I called recently. Here go a trail line right here, right? So I wanted to show you, it don't just go from the bottom, guys. It goes from the top to the bottom. So this one was on uh, Facebook, right? And this is where I actually trail line played out. Now they're not gonna to always touch automatically. Just look for those uh, re those points where it break. So as you can see, that's why I want you to get into a habit, like don't overcomplicate trend lines, guys. Sometimes you will have what we call, literally what we learned yesterday, we have liquidity grabs on everything, right? Understand that trend lines are a form of supported resistance. So liquidity grabs happen on all types of supported resistance, right? So this was a liquidity grab right here. We had some liquidity grabs right here. And then we had, you know, the breakout, right? So you do have liquidity grabs, but we see how we know that our trend lines are legit is even if we have a liquidity grab, we had aggressive moves off of it, right? So that's how you know. So overall, how do we make a trade based off of this, right? So as we can see, let's put it all together, right? We have Facebook pretty much consolidating, right? Trading in this range, right? So now we're waiting for a break above this range or a breakdown to take entries. So as Facebook was consolidating in this range, it ended up breaking out this range and going up to the top of that. Now we can go, there we go, using our key levels as support and resistance, right? Now, this is obviously we're in a bear market, so not every level is going to work out. But overall, you kind of see like that would be the next target. We, I don't think Facebook going to get that high, but I'm just saying like, if it wasn't in the bear market, it'd be totally different. But overall, like that's why I'm trying to get you guys to see trend lines. You know, you can do it from a down. Let's go find a better one though. Netflix, I think Netflix was a good one. Okay, so you have trend lines like this, uh, like Netflix. So we had Netflix having this trend line and then it broke out, right? Rejection, rejection, then it kind of consolidated and then broke out. These are high profitable setups. I'm not gonna lie. These are one of my favorite types of trades. Stuff like this is when we pretty much start having this little bitty trend line or whatever, and then we started consolidating into the trend line. Normally we have a breakout to that next high, right? There we go. Pinpointed, we hit that level, that uh, level that we were talking about, that key level, we hit it on the money on Netflix, right? And right now we actually gapped above it, right? So keep that in mind. Um, do every Is this making sense so far? This is my favorite type of setup, this one too. Can you call? Yes. Yes, you can catch plays off of a trail line too. You can have, so let me draw, let me just draw something right now. So instead of like looking at actual candles, I know people help with drawing. So like what happens is sometimes you will have a trail line right in the downtrend. So sometimes you can have uh, bear flags into the trail line, right? You can have bear flags into the trail line. And then we have a breakdown to reject it. 
or at the bottom of a tread line, we can have double bottoms, right? Boom. We can have a double bottom. And then break the tread line. There's a lot of different patterns that you can see at the tread lines to kind of tell, right? Do you chase trail line breakouts or wait for the retest? So I'm going to get y'all, and it's going to get more into my strategy. So for me personally, I don't chase breakouts on trail lines. Um, normally, I'm always in, uh, especially like something like this. I'm normally, when I see something like this, that consolidation, and we get to the bottom of that range. So as you can see right here, we're in a range. So normally, when I see a setup like this, where we could potentially break out the trail line, I buy at the bottom of that range and then I ride it up for the breakout, right? If I'm not already in the breakout before, so let me delete that. If I'm not in this move before it breaks out, then yes, I will wait for a retest. That's why you haven't seen me call Netflix. I mean, I call it the sell puts for earnings, but you haven't seen me call Netflix because I missed the breakout. So I'm gonna wait for something like that, right? I'm gonna wait for a break and retest and then I will take entry. And for the people that's going to ask me, Jay, what if it never retests? Totally fine. I, there's a thousand other stocks to trade. So there's no point in me even chasing that, right? So let me look at AMD, because I think that's actually what I did on AMD. Hold on. I think that's what I did. But don't complicate it, guys. Relax. You know, I try to make sure that everybody understands. Okay, so let's remove that. That's the more complicated one. I'm trying to get you out of easy ones before I complicate it. So I already said we already have a trail line right here. We already know that one. And trail lines can connect to each other, but I'm trying to get you out of easy ones first. Hold on, why did I take this trade? Oh, that was a complicated one. Never mind. We're not going over complicated ones right now. Trying to make sure I'm gonna get the complicated ones. Hmm. Why is it? Oh, because I got this pin on. I was so like, why is it doing that? Okay, so right here we have our trend line break, right? Once it broke, it sent, right? People might think like Jay, that's not a lot, right? It went from when it broke, it went from 113 to 125. That's a pretty big move on uh AMD. And as you can see. Like I said, if, you, if you're good at drawing your key levels like we're supposed to, let's add the line chart back up. But out before that breakout, I mean, that level was a given right there, right? That level was a given, right? The next one, right? These levels are given, right? So it hit it. We're in a bear market, so most likely it's not going to go to all those um, targets. But if you would have took the breakout or bought it down here, which I probably would have, right? when we were buying it down here, having the trend line potentially right there, it's getting smaller and smaller to the bottom of that trend line. I probably would have got in about here at that 101, and then I was able to ride it up to there, um, stuff like that. So well, let me go back and ask, answer some more questions real quick. What's wrong with drawing channels? The reason why I don't like when people draw channels is because they focus on the channels a little bit too much right? They try to like, you know, I like clean charts. So what happens is when you draw channels and nothing wrong with it, it's just, I think people, they miss a lot of trading opportunities because when they start drawing trend lines, they feel like it has to be in the channel or it's not going to be a valid trend line, right? And they start forcing things, right? They feel like it has to be in a channel. So for example, we got this uh, trend line up top on AMD. And what they're going to try to do is they're going to try to force a channel here, you know what I'm saying? And just do some crazy stuff, right? So that's why I tell them, like, you know, people like force it. And if they can't make a channel, they don't make a trend line. But in the entire time, this was a trend line, right? But people, if they don't see the channel, they don't want to draw it. And that's what I mean by that. So our trend lines in the downtrend market going to have uh, lower highs and lower lows will be the same applying trend lines in the uptrend. Where they typically, yep, same thing. So 
normally trend lines in the uh, uptrend will have higher highs and higher lows, and then a trend line in the downtrend will have uh, lower uh, lower highs and lower lows. But it all just depends, right? So for this one, we were in a mini miniature uptrend. So this is how you kind of can tell. So you have primary trend. So your primary trend is your bigger trend, right? So we know AMD in general, our primary trend is a downtrend. And then we have the secondary trends, which is this small little uptrend to continue the downtrend. That's what that's basically what's happening. So put this in your notes. You have primary trends and you have secondary trends. So right now, the primary trend, right? I keep trying, I keep going to drawing the, the complicated ones, but the primary trend is overall a downtrend. And then you have these little corrections that create secondary trends. So put that in your notes. I'm going to keep answering some questions because this type of class, I have to make sure if a trend line breaks on the third touch, would it be able to trade that? Or would it have to break that third touch for you to realize it's a trend line? Um, so if it, if you have a trend line drawing, right and then on the third touch end up breaking right but at one point you know it looked like it was connecting then i would still count that and the reason why is if we extend this trend line longer you know once it broke what can happen is when we get into our advanced trend lines you know in the future it can come up here right and then break down but in the beginning guys i want you to focus solely on just the plain trend lines don't try to get too much into an advanced trend line just yet so um, do y'all think y'all ready for the difficult ones yet? Do y'all think y'all ready for a difficult ones yet? Uh, explain more, I'm gonna, I can get more into uh, stuff like that. Jay, I hope this don't sound like a dumb question. I'm still a newbie, but how can you tell which direction it is going? Um, when you're looking at trail lines, that's the whole point you want to look for moves off of it, right? So we don't know, like when we look at it, we know that the direction is going, it's up, right? So we're looking for the trend line to connect three times in the up movement, right? Because price is going up. So we want to see if it connects three times, right? Now you don't, that's the problem where people get, they like, they think it's a trend line. So they think we either going to bounce and they just immediately buy calls or we're going to break down, right? When it gets to these trend line bounces, you want to see some type of confirmation, maybe on the smaller time frames, or something like that that's going to indicate that we can bounce. You know, maybe uh, in in this, if you were trading bounces, maybe in this particular setup, you probably would draw a bullish engulf. It might be a bullish engulfing at the trend line. It might be a double bottom. It might be a hammer candle, pin bar, or some type of bullish candle, right? Understand, guys, when you take any trades, no matter what trend line, supporter resistance, chart, anything, you want to have some type of confirmation on why you taking that, right? You don't want to just take it blindly, right? You want to have some type of, if you're trying to be bullish, you want to have some type of bullish confirmation on a different time frame before you take that trade, right? Same thing with bearish setups. People just see this and they just take it, right? Without no context, without no type of pattern, no what I type, anything telling them other than just a trend line that is going to be bearish, right? We, with trading, you want to have multiple confluences to take trades. A lot of people just take trades off of one thing. They see one thing and like, I'm taking this trade. For example, a shooting star, I see this all the time. We have a shooting star pattern. People are like, well, I see a shooting star, so I'm taking puts. Like they don't have no other context on why they want to take that trade, right? They just see a shooting star. Like, is it at resistance? Sometimes it'd be in midair and they take it and see the stock run right back up on them, right? And that's the thing. You have to get into a habit of taking trades with multiple content. Um, Jay, on this MD, why won't you draw the trend line from the top connect points? 125 to like 110. 125 to 110. Also, let me make sure that I make this clear before I draw something else. Trend lines are going to look different for certain people. Um, some people might, you know, rather do this type of trend line to where they do a bigger one, right? Where they do this, where they have rejection here, rejection there, come back, rejection there, rejection there, then wait and see what they do here. Like that's just a wider trend line. So that means they're going to wait a longer time for a move. 
Uh, some people might do a shorter uh, tread line. A lot of the time, since I'm a like a, I don't consider myself a long term person. So most of the time, I'm never really trading a primary trend. I'm normally trading the secondaries because those happen a little quicker than the, uh, the bigger ones. So like, let's say that we were to draw this big as a trail line, right? Let's say we were to draw this big one as a trail line, right? Oh, let's fix that a little bit. It's like a liquidity graph. Okay, let's say we were to draw this big one as a trail line, right? Some people are okay with waiting all of this time for it to get there and then make their move. Versus with me, I'm like, well, I got this secondary trail line. It actually created a bear flag kind of right? It created a bear flag at the primary trail line, and then we broke down, right? And this is actually what I drew. I just realized that when I'm thinking about my trades that I took, this is the actual trade that I took, right? I actually took it from here. So I did a little risky, but I took the trail line rejection from here. And the reason why is because I had multiple contexts, right? I had my trail line, my primary trend, and then we had a secondary trend into that primary trail line, which created a bear flag, and then I took it up here. Right. I don't recommend doing this all the time, but sometimes it work. If you guys remember, you guys were a lot of you guys were in this trade with me. This is why I took it. Trend line rejection, bear flag into that. I have multiple contexts, most likely on a smaller time frame. We probably had some type of double top or something like that, or some type of bearish pattern that made me give more confirmation. And also maybe like a stochastics or momentum shift uh coming to the downside. There's a lot of uh reasons why we could have took this trade, right? Yeah, secondary and primary. I trade, like just being honest guys, I trade mostly the secondary trends, like I said, because they happen a lot quicker. I'm not really a long-term person. Oh, did I just explain it? I thought I did. So draw the trend lines at the top in the downtrend and below. Yes. So if you're, oh, that's a great question. I don't even know how you could draw it the other way. That kind of will just like make me kind of mad a little bit. Like who does it that way? But just in case, if we're in a downtrend, guys, start from the top and then work your way to the bottom. If we're in an uptrend, guys, start from the um, bottom and go to the top. That will kind of be weird if you draw it the other way, if you do it the other way around. I'm not saying that you will be wrong, but I don't see how that like it don't even feel right me trying to do it this way that that doesn't feel right to me uh but if that works for you <laughs> that's totally fine that just don't feel right i don't i don't like the way that feels doing it from the bottom to the top okay so i wanted to get into so under, understand this um can you talk about when trend lines become invalidated? So when it comes to trend lines, guys, it's kind of hard to tell if a trend line is invalidated, if we're being honest. Um, really when, you know, I would consider this trend line, okay, this is going to be kind of hard because when we have more advanced trend lines, you will kind of see how sometimes they don't get invalidated. But like, for example, this trend line, it broke, right? And it haven't came back. So this trend line is now invalidated, right? Now in the future, in the future, I will, me personally, after this happened, I'm deleting this trend line, but don't be surprised in the future if we have something like this, right? It invalidated that trend line now. Now in the future, it comes back and reject off that previous trend line. And like I said, that's when we get more into advanced, but to keep everybody from being confused, guys, the trend line is invalidated once it finally breaks after that third touch, right? So it bounced, 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 it broke down, it's now invalidated. Don't complicate it, it is now invalidated, right? Ignore all the advanced stuff right now. That trend line is now invalidated. Uh, let's go look for another one that was invalidated. Let's go look at SPY. Okay, so let's go look at SPY. So right here, we had a uh, trend line right here at on SPY. One touch, two touches, and three touches, right? So overall, the trend line was still validated. And as you can see, I mean, uh, when it broke, it broke, right? And what did it do? It, it swung to that next high, 
right? But we get into that. But overall, that's a good trend line. If we were in a bullish scenario, we could probably see SPY come back all the way up to that 416. Um, I highly doubt that we'll see that, but you know, it's not impossible. Uh, hold on, I'm trying to get y'all a good example when they're invalidated. I guess the best thing to do right now is to show you the advanced one so that you can kind of see. Okay, so are y'all ready for the advanced ones real quick? So does it matter if your trend line is at the top or the, uh, no, you're, oh, my bad. Maybe that's probably what's confusing people. People are thinking they have to connect every single point. No guys, no, you're just looking for the rejection points. I don't have to draw my trend line all the way up here. And you know what I'm saying to get, I'm just looking for where it rejects aggressively. And if I want to start from there, that's totally fine. If I want to pull it back even more, that's fine too. But I, the goal is to find the best points where it's sold off or it uh, reacted to aggressively, right? So here, if I draw from here to here, I mean, yeah, it's still valid. It kind of changes things a little bit, but as you can see, it kind of just held the trail line. It didn't kind of react too aggressively off of it versus right here, we had a clear rejection, boom, clear rejection, then slowly came back up and broke it. Y'all get what I mean? Like, so I can connect it from any point, but at the same time, for me, the best trend lines come from the most aggressive moves, right? But like I said, you wouldn't be wrong. Draw the line underneath the trend versus on the top of it. Hold on. Let me make sure I'm answering these uh, questions right. The timeline is always left to right, not other way. Yeah. Um, I do one. Um, no, I mean draw the line underneath the trend versus on top. Oh, so it depends. So when you're drawing this trend line, it depends on what type of trade that you're looking for, right? So when SPY is pretty much starting to be at this bottom, normally you will see it at like a huge major support, right? Uh, this is not just with SPY, any stocks. When stocks are like kind of at the bottom, they've been selling off for so long. So then we start having these trend lines where we have like those, like, you know, stuff like this in a downtrend where we draw it on the top, right? And we're looking for a move to break upside, right? We don't have to really draw from the bottom unless we're taking. So if you draw from the bottom, so make sure I make sense. If you're drawing it from the bottom, you're looking for a bounce play, right? If you're drawing the trend line like this, potentially, you're looking for two different types of trades, right? You're looking for bounces, Or breakdowns, right? When you're drawing it that way, right? So you're looking to take entries. You have different entries on this uptrend, right? You have entry here, 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 the breakdown here, or the retest here, right? When we have a trend line going up. Now, if you're looking for a trend line, like this, like going down, that means the type of trade that you're looking for is a breakout or a rejection. Y'all see the difference? I hope that just made sense. Maybe that cleared up some stuff. So if you're drawing it from the top, you're looking for a breakout or a rejection. So you will have entries from rejection there right so if you're having a trend line from the top and it don't matter whichever one you want to trade right if we're in the downtrend i would recommend doing the top one because you're taking puts in a downtrend you want to trade with the trend the trend is a downtrend so more likely you will probably want to prefer doing puts instead of the other way around right so then you have your entries at these uh, ovals i mean these uh rectangles right that is your entries in this one right rejection 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 and then how do you know to take a breakout instead is if now when we get into identifying higher highs and higher lows, you see that price did not make a lower low, right? We made a, we made, so we have a lower high, lower low, lower high, and this low is not lower than that low. So that created a double bottom, which then gives you a breakout type of trade, right? So it's still the same thing, guys. It gives you a breakout type of trade. Did this make sense?
I don't know if I answered your question this time. Okay. Hold on. Oh, that's what y'all asked. Okay, yeah. So I hope that just made sense. Yeah, you draw trend lines at the top when it's a downtrend and you're looking to take – say, understand the trend, guys. If I'm drawing trend lines at the top, that means it's a downtrend, right? So that means I'm looking to take put entries. I'm looking for – I'm drawing the trend line because I want to take puts, right? Remember what I told you guys, and we'll get more into this, but you want to take puts at lower highs and you want to take calls at higher lows, right? You never want to take puts at lower lows. That'd be the problem. Have you ever took a trade and – how many people have took a trade and you, so let's say you took a trade here. This is what a lot of traders do because they don't understand a trend. They see a stock selling off, right? They ho they go ahead and get in. They go ahead and get in because the stock is selling off, right? Most likely they go buy at a lower low, right? Just to see the stock reverse, they get shook out and then see the stock go lower. How many people have did that? You most likely bought it at a lower low. How many people have think they bought it at a lower low? Right, we all have. We all have bought at a lower low and see the stock go back up that way. We sell, then see it go our way again, and then it's it's literally an endless cycle, right? We buy puts here in this area. It moves back up. We get shooken out. We sell. It come back down. You like, man, I just missed that. I'm about to get back in, buy the lower low again, and do the same thing, and then at the end, you didn't blew your damn account, right? So that is why I'm drawing them at, in a downtrend. I'm drawing it from the top to the bottom is because the trades that I'm looking for are puts, right? And then eventually when price re, uh, fails to make a lower low again, that's when I know, okay, double bottom, time to take a breakout or we're going to be like doing like an up type of trade, right? But all right, so I hope that made sense. Um, trend lines don't complicate it, guys. Do not complicate it. Uh, normally it depends. I buy whenever price is telling me to buy, right? So I wouldn't say, oh, I just buy at the third touch. Um, because, and I'm, I'm going to be honest with you guys, you know, to draw a trend line, you want three touches, but sometimes guys, you know, it's up to your risk tolerance. Sometimes, you know, I actually took puts before the third touch. And I'm just, the reason why I tell you a certain way, I'm going to tell you the right way to do it. And then if you, you know, when you start trading and you develop your own strategy and how you want to do things, you can kind of play with it a little bit and kind of decide yourself how you want to do it. So just for quick transparency, um, I took this trade here, right? Before we even made a third trend line, guys, before we even made it to make it a valid trend line, like a, a good trend line, I had already took puts on spy here, right? Using other context. So I'm like, okay, we could be, this could be the second touch point of this trend line. And then right here, you know, this was a start of a supply zone. So it's like, I'm going to tell you the, the right way to do it. And like I said, once you start trading, you have a trading system and plan, you know what type of setups you like, then you can base trades off of how you want to do it. But overall, guys, you will notice, like, I'm like, all right, this might be a trade line. This might be the second touch point. So I'm going to take puts on it. And if the context add up right, then that's totally fine, right? But don't make that a habit of doing that all the time. Just, you know, sometimes when, hey, when it happens, right? Yeah, yeah. Like somebody said, which requires experience. I mean, it's really all comes down to experience, uh, trial and error. Like maybe a, for a newbie, you will probably want to wait for that third touch, you know, just gain some experience in the market a little bit. And then, you know, for my more experienced people, you will probably be more likely, you know, to you know try to like predict or anticipate sometimes uh these rejections or whatever that's totally up to you right um but as a newbie i will personally say just focus on those three touches right now and then with time and experience you'll get better at being able to time certain things now for the experience trail lines i want you guys to know it because i do it a lot this requires a lot of chart time. I'm not even going to lie to you guys. This requires a lot of chart time. So if you a person that know you're not going to give it all into charting, then I will probably just call a class for you right now. Uh, simply because what I'm about to do next requires a lot, a lot of chart time, um, but it's very rewarding.
you take puts. Oh, I take puts at lower highs, right? In the downtrend, lower highs. So lower highs are where we're in the downtrend and price come back up. That means, so we got this high. So then this is a lower high because this, um, this, hold on. I hate whenever, I get tongue twisted on lower highs and lower lows. This high is lower than that high, right? This high is lower than that high. So we have lower highs, right? Higher lows. No, we have lower highs. My bad. I always get tongue twisted when it comes to this. So in the downtrend, you have lower lows and lower highs. So this is a lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high. This low isn't lower than this low. So it's not a lower low. This will just be a low, right? And that signals a double bottom. Right here in the uptrend, we have a higher high right? Higher low, higher high. Why is this a higher high? Because this high is higher than that high. Why is this a higher low? Because this low is higher than that low, right? And you want it to take quality trades. You want to take calls at higher lows and puts at lower highs. And the reason why is because you get a better quality trade, right? Because if you understand this, guys, you take a trade off of a lower, a higher low, right? Your stop loss is right below, right? Versus you taking a trade in the middle. We don't know when that higher high is going to stop, right? We don't know that. So it's better to take it at an actual point rather than trying to take it in the middle or at the top. Because if you take it at a higher high, right? Most likely what comes after a higher high, a higher low. So what happens is you take calls here, it pull back, you get shooken out just to see the stock price go your way. The reason for that is you most likely bought at a higher high and sold it at a lower high, I mean, a higher low, right? But we got an actual class on this. Just uh, just bear with me right now. But we got to ask you class on this. If you're taking that bounce, what's the indication to exit? Um, So it depends, right? Uh, normally, if I'm taking a bounce, right? Let's say I'm taking a bounce. Normally, you have to understand the way I taught you to draw your support and resistance levels, these bounces are going to be at support. If you're if the stock is bouncing on that trend line, that's a support no matter what. I don't care what nobody say. If it's bouncing off a trend line, you should already have that supported, right? That should be a support level. So that's what's taking it. We know that stocks like to bounce off support. So once we have these trend line bounces, most likely. 99% of the time, that's going to be a support level. So my exit is normally going to be, and it depends on that trend line, but it's normally going to be, you know, that next level of my next target. It's like regular support and resistance level. So it's going to be my next target. That's going to be my exit, my next target. Or sometimes, you know, if you're up enough to take profits or if you're having a trailing stop to take profits, but normally the goal is to buy a support, sell a resistance. So my exit is going to be at the next level, just like regular trading, right? Yeah, double bottoms are mainly at key levels. Um, but hold on, guys, real quick, so I don't get into, uh, so if we were in puts and we have a double bottom instead of a lower low, that's an indication to sell, correct? So if we're in puts and we have a double bottom instead, of another lower low that's yes so you want to sell it right because if prices you got to understand guys if price is coming to a support level and it's not and it's in the downtrend and your inputs and it's not breaking that then it's not creating the lower low it's creating a double bottom right and that's what you want to get out why would you hold puts if it's uh creating a double bottom right if price not making a lower low then why are you still in puts and that's why it's best to just take it at the lower high. That's what I be trying to tell people, right? It's better to take puts at lower highs than trying to take a lower low break, right? Because sometimes it can be a wick down, liquidity grab, just to be a double bottom and bring you back above. So to avoid all of that, just take them at a lower high. To literally avoid all of that unnecessary fake out stuff, if you just take it at a lower high, you will have a way better quality trade. And you will notice if you're taking your trades at a right level, at a lower, if you take it puts at lower highs, you will notice that the trade actually works immediately. 
most of the time it works kind of right away it don't really do all that bsing with you right for example here we go this is a good example right here this is a lower high right here on spy as you can see if you took puts at this lower high what happened it paid you right away right versus let's say that you see right here we have our lower low and then you were taking a lower low break it wicked down and came right back up so as you can see if you rather just took it at a lower high it would have gave you a way better trade than trying to take the breakdown here yeah you probably could have made some money on this breakdown here this is a nice little wick down this was from that breakdown happened from 392 to uh 380 so you would have caught a 12 dollar move I'm not gonna lie you would have caught a 12 dollar move if you was able to you know hold the whole thing but you notice if you would have took it at a lower high right because you had some look look how what happened this ain't a regular candle now this is a doji so that means we went up you went negative just to go back down right so you could have got shaken out versus if you took it at this lower high clean price action down clean boom nice momentum candles to the downside because you want to know why that happened because you took it at a nice level you took it at an actual lower high right so that's why i paid you better rather than you trying to trade this little breakout bs right Do that make sense? Cool. If it bounces as support, that doesn't necessarily make it a strong key level, does it? Well, I taught you guys to make, you know, levels, right? I mean, if it bounces, you know, most likely that is a, a, a level of significance. Um, now, key, it might not be exactly a strong key level, but, you know, we treat support levels the same, right? We don't just like, yeah, I taught you guys to make key levels, but at the same time, guys, that don't mean just if you see just a level that, you know, it reacted, but not too hard. That don't mean ignore it. I think that's probably what people be getting wrong. Like they be like, well, shit, it ain't a uh, key level. So I'm just going to ignore the whole thing. No, like it's, <laughs> it's still a level. Don't ignore it. It's still a level. It's just probably not an aggressive level, but it's still a level at the end of the day, right? What would your stop, uh, where would your stop loss be or exit strategy? So my exit strategy would simply be pretty much that next level, right? Uh, from if I'm taking calls as support, my my exit will be at resistance on the bounce. Uh, but as far as like taking uh as far as like stop loss wise, if I'm taking it at a lower high, right? That's a resistance. So my stop loss, that's why it's better to take it this way, because my stop loss will be right above. And we're going to, we have a class on stop losses or whatever, but understand guys, if I'm taking the puts here at this lower high, that means where would the trade be validated at? Hi huh, guys, where, if I'm taking puts, right? If I'm taking puts here, right? My stop loss, the trade would now be invalidated if we break above this level here, right? Or that resistance level. And we we'll get more into like stop losses and exiting and all that. But overall, I just want you guys to get that into a habit. That's why it's better to take the trade at these levels because you have a clearer stop loss. So now let me add my box right here, my risk reward box, right? So about right there. So about right there, and then our target is going to be that lower low, right? If we're taking it at that higher low, we're going to take it at that previous lower low. So we have a nice little risk to reward ratio on here, right? Right, we have a nice risk to reward ratio when it comes to that from taking it up here. And that's how a lot of my trades go, that high percentage is because I'm taking them at these type of trades, right? How do you know the lower high failed to make another one? Um, how do you know the lower high failed to make another one? Um, the only time that a lower high is invalidated if it breaks the previous lower high, if that makes sense. So to make that make sense, guys, and this is all for anybody think we're not off track. The trend is all about higher highs and higher lows. So you understand in this part is part of class, right? So the only time that a trend line is actually a lower high is actually invalidated is if the previous high is now broken, right? So, and what I mean by that is, if we're in a downtrend, right?
the only time that a lower high is broken is if we come up here, right? We break that high and make a new high. Now, guys, if it stops right here, is it broken? No, right? Why it's not broken? Because it never broke the previous high, right? Actually, what does this create? What does this create? A double top, right? That creates a double top, right? So that gives us another trading opportunity, a double top. There we go. And take it back down. Now, if we were to have something like this, where it breaks, then there you go. Now it's invalidated. That's not valid no more, right? Because it now broke the previous high. And now this is going to take some time. I'm not about to sit here and lie to you guys like that. You're going to know this part overnight, right? Identifying the trend and all that, that will take time, right? It just come with practice and repetition. And I'm just going to be honest with you guys. And the kind of market that we're in right now, we're in a downtrend, but it's been so damn choppy. It's been hard. It's been hard to identify a trend. So that's why we go to trend lines instead, right? It's been hard as hell to identify a clear trend because we've been having so many days where we just chopping. So it's been kind of hard to identify a trend. So that's why trend lines come in and they help us a lot because trend lines giving us actual key points to base trades off of rather than just the trend solely itself without a trail line, if that makes sense, right? Because we haven't had that right now. How would you know that it's a fake out? Um, that's the thing. You That's the problem with trading. You don't know if it's a fake out, right? Because what can happen is, what can happen is it can break this uh, lower high and then come immediately back down, right? We don't know. We don't know. That's the problem. We don't know. We just have to act accordingly, right? If we, if it does break that lower, if it does break that lower high, then I'm a retest type of trader. So for me, I won't even be taking the breakout. What I would like to see is we break that lower high and come back and test that lower high area as support. And then once I see that we're holding that support, I will take entries there and then ride it up, right? And that starts what? That starts what, guys? If I'm doing it that way, what is that the start of? A new trend, right? An uptrend, right? Right? The new trend. Uptrend could be a secondary. Actually, no, that's not going to be a, If it breaks a, a bigger trend, lower high, then that wouldn't be a secondary trend. The secondary trends are these. So what's going to happen is, right, I want everybody right now to pay attention to this, right? When we're, we're about to establish primary trends and secondary trends. So this right here, right here, this is a primary trend, this whole entire thing, right? This is the primary trend. This is the secondary trend, this correction right here. How do you know the secondary trend? Well, guess what? If we see this downtrend on a daily time frame, then these corrections are uptrend on a what? If we see a down, a big old downtrend on a daily time frame, what are these small corrections? They are a uptrend on a lower time frame, right? So that is how, how do you know to take puts, right? If we have a downtrend on our primary trend and we come to the lower time frame or our secondary trend, so for us to take puts, we want, if we want to still take puts, right? We want to come down to that lower time frame and we want to have a uptrend break. Right, we want to have an uptrend break on the lower time frame. Then we have the bigger time frame as context that we're coming down that gives us a better quality trade. Let me repeat that for the people that didn't understand. If I want to take puts on a bigger time frame and I see a correction, I'm coming to the lower time frame, which will be in an uptrend. I don't want to just take puts right away because I see the big time frame is in the downtrend. You're going to be red for no reason. So what I do is on that lower time frame, I want to see the uptrend break on the lower time frame, will, which will trigger the breakdown on the bigger time frame. Right? Did that make sense? In other words, those are the short-term trends. Yep, the second. So we call them secondary. Yeah, so that helps you maximize profit and that helps you get 
in better entries, right? Because when I started trading, and I'm down, when I started trading the first time, I was pretty good at identifying the trends, right? But my problem was I got in too early. And that was because if I'm trying to get in puts on a bigger, on a bigger uh, downtrend, I would just get into puts, not understanding that the lower time frames have a secondary trend that's basically an uptrend, right? So I would just get in and then it eventually will go my way once that uptrend on a smaller time frame is then broken versus me just waiting, identifying that we're in a bigger downtrend, but we're in a smaller time uptrend, waiting for that smaller time to break, which will then trigger the bigger time frame breakdown, right? And that's when I my entry started getting better. And like I said, right now we're just practicing trend lines. Uh, when we get more into strategy base, you will see it like as far as my strategies, but that is what I do. Like that is like the best way to do it. Like it's hard as hell to get entries. Everybody always think like, oh, it has to be a secret time frame to get entries or the five minute. No, no, no. It's all about the trend, right? I if I see a bigger time frame move. I'm going to come to the smaller time frame. It's just literally everything I'm doing is the same way. If I see a bigger time frame chart pattern, if I see a bigger time frame chart pattern, right? If I see a bull flag on a daily time frame, I'm not about to come to the daily time frame and just buy calls. No, I'm going to come to the smaller time frame and look for some type of bullish confirmation to take calls then, right? It's the same way with trend lines. If I want to be bearish on a bigger time frame, I'm going to come down to that 15 minute, that lower time frame, look for something that's bearish right with it, then take my entries, right? A lot of you guys see it on one time frame and you just take it. That's not how it works. You're going to be read so many times, right? You're going to be read over and over and over, read for a while until it happens, right? For example, today we have spy, we have spy pushing into a trend line. Actually, let's go. Let's. I want to use that example. That's a great example today. All right. So I had this happen today. I had this literally happen today in the chat. I didn't do it because obviously I'm teaching you. I know not to do it. But what happened was we had this we had this resistance on spy. Right. So what did people do? They bought puts at this trend line. Right. As it was getting close, they're like, it's going to reject. I'm buying puts. Why are you buying puts? Did the lower time frame tell you to buy puts yet? They bought puts off the daily time frame. You have to come to the lower time frame and see, did it tell you to buy puts? Do this tell you to buy puts on SPY? Answer, answer that for me real quick. Does this tell you to buy puts on SPY yet? No, the lower time frame has not gave you that confirmation to take puts. Just because it rejected off this trail line on a bigger time frame, the lower time frame haven't told you yet. So there's no reason for you to take puts. Yes, it can reject, but it's not ready yet. My bad, y'all, because I know a lot of y'all did it today. My, I ain't look. I ain't trying to come for nobody. I'm just trying to, you know, I'm just trying to let y'all know what happened, right? <laughs> I'm just trying to let y'all know what happened. You took puts, but the the time frame ain't showed you that yet. Now, Spy can most definitely reject this trend line, but it hasn't showed you yet. Right now, what about here though? Hold on, I got some for you just to show you. We're at that trail line again. Was there anything here that told us that we were coming down? Was there anything right here that told us we were coming down? Please, somebody get it right. Please. We had a pin bar, right? A shooting star, right? Thank you. Thank you. We had a shooting star at the trail line, right? On the lower time frame, right? So, what did that tell us? We were coming down. We have a bearish confirmation on the lower time frame, guys. So now you can take the trade, right? It could have been anything here. That is a book. I'm when I'm saying I'm looking for context. There we go. There we go. We got the context, right? We have a trend line rejection. We have um, we have a trend line rejection. We have a shooting star. There you go. Now here, do we have that? We don't have that right now. So there's no point to taking entries yet. Now I have traders that do this all the time and I hate when they say this, right? That is why I blocked a lot of traders guys because it's kind of annoying. Some people will say, okay, and I know I'm sorry if, if this is you, right? Some people will say, well, Jay, I, 
I know it's going to reject eventually, so I'm going to just get in now. Why, the, why are you just giving away unnecessary money? Why? It, it, that makes no sense. Why the, Oh, it's going to reject eventually, so I'm getting in now, Jay. Why? Why? That's like saying, okay, I just got paid an extra check this week. I'm going to just go ahead and pay my rent an extra month in advance just because. Just because I, I got it. I mean, if you want to, like I said, that's fine. That's totally fine. But why? It hasn't, like, you know what I'm saying? It don't make any sense. Wait for the setup to come. You ain't got to jump in early, y'all. You don't have to jump in early all the time. Now, some trades, yeah, you might have to jump in early because you get a big move. It'd be too quick to catch. But stuff like this is going to give you the opportunity. Relax, right? Especially, and I'm being honest. I'm going to just be honest. And the market that we're in now, that anticipation stuff, or I wouldn't even because I, I am an anticipated trader. Don't give me, don't get that wrong. But you have to know when and when not to do it. Guys, we all know this market is hell as far as these pullbacks go, right? You might say, well, Jay, I'm gonna just hold it. And by the time you hold it, you're down 80%. So by the time it make that move that you want it to go, you're not even gonna be in profit because you're down 80% already. That's what I'm trying to get y'all to understand. You down 80% already. It, it, it don't even matter no more. <laughs> it don't matter no more. You down 80%. It does not matter. You're getting in early. It's going to go down. Yeah, it went down. By the, I'm telling y'all right now, this market that we in right now, let's say that you got inputs right here anticipating that it was going to break down, right? Spy could come all the way down here and you still going to be red in this market. So why even wait? For, why even try it? Why even try it? This market is lame. I'm telling y'all, I'm being honest. I used to be that trader that can hold through everything. Like, I mean, when I say I had the highest tolerance for holding through something, that doesn't exist in this market. It don't. You go down 80% before you even go back up, right? Patience. I'm about to teach y'all. Pay. If one thing y'all don't learn from me, it's going to be patience, right? I wasn't always like this. This definitely came with time. So I definitely understand if you're not patient yet, but you're going to have to become patient at some point, right? At some point, right? Thank you. Good, good example. If you, if you want to jump in some early, just paper trade it. Just paper trade it. Then when your paper trade down 80%, then you'll be like, okay, now I see why it's better for me to just wait, right? Okay, so that's point of that so now i think everybody's starting to understand on how to like as far as like where that goes with trend lines now it's time for the little advanced stuff really quick we're going to have two classes on advanced stuff like i said guys if if you're right here you know if you're not going to be putting in that time uh on charting guys you could pretty much log off a of class because it's advanced stuff is a headache but it pays and you get to see things that other traders don't see so let's get into it let's start off with a trade that we're in right now which is baba Oh, hold on. I got a lot of stuff going on. Okay. So. All right. So a lot of traders are not going to see this, right? I want everybody to pay attention, right? A lot of traders are not going to see stuff like this, right? And this comes with experience and chart time. So when it comes to advanced trend lines, these are a little more complicated because you're piercing through a lot of price action and you're looking for major points within price action. So what I mean by that is right here is a advanced trail line, right? So when we have aggressive moves, but we're piercing through different things to find that trail line, if that makes sense. So we had a strong rejection here, rejection here, rejection here, and then we broke that trail line. And now we came to test that trail line as I mean, as support, right? So why did I swing Baba calls? Because we did a move like this, right? Let me draw it. So right, we're moving in kind of waves, right? So we had that retest and then boom, right? We're looking for a move like that. Now, this is going to take some time. This is not going to happen overnight. But as you can see, that is why I swung Baba, right?
Did did y'all see that right now? <laughs> did that kind of make sense? How we looking into waves? Okay, I'm gonna hit y'all with some more. I'm gonna have to draw. I ain't gonna lie. I'm gonna just go with you guys. The way that I found out how to do stuff like this is looking at people that know how to do it charts. After time, then you will see it. I promise you. One of the traders that I got this from, if y'all don't know him already, his name is Gary. Um, Gary put me on to this type of stuff. And how it clicked for me was seeing his. Like, I just like, okay, I see what he do there. Okay, I see that. That makes sense. Let's rock with it, right? And that's why I like to uh, post a lot of these so you guys can kind of see it, right? Uh, let's go to another one. I've, I used this one before. Um, hold on. Hey, yo, this was a thousand percent trade using the hidden trade lines that not a lot of traders can see. This is a thousand percenter. Right here. So as you can see, there we go. We had a strong rejection point, strong rejection point, strong rejection point, broke, retested. I took calls on this retest similar to Baba. Right now, Baba is in this phase that I'm talking about. I took calls on this retest, and then we 1,000%, right? Did y'all see that one? So you have the trend line and watch for it, the trend line trees. But yes, so basically, yes, that's exactly like, because I was trying to figure out a good way to explain that. So basically, what I did was I already had a previous trend line, right? So what I'm doing is I'm looking for trend lines that were old trend lines and they end up getting broke. And then I'm looking for a retest to see if it wants to retest that trend line and to go up, right? So that's kind of basically what I'm doing. I'm looking for previous trend lines and then I'm looking to see if once they are now broken, which we will call invalidated, I'm seeing to see if the market still wants to use that trend line. So now you can see as we push it back even more, that trend line is now officially invalidated. Like it's no longer there because now price is just reacting. It didn't react to it no more. It kind of just, you know, said F it, right? It just now it just chopping between it, right? So then that's when we know that now the trend line is over with. But overall, there we go. Um, hold on. Why didn't you take the trail line on the new one? Are you talking about uh? Da, 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 are you talking about this one? I didn't see it. I didn't see it. That's why I didn't take it. I didn't see it. So that probably would have gave me even more confirmation. But I, I didn't see it. I, I'll be honest with you. I didn't see that until you just said something. Okay, so that one probably would have been a little easier. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> the trail line was like a resistance, then it turned to support. Yep, that's pretty much what it was. It was a resistance, so it's pretty much like guys, don't overcomplicate. I know I said advanced charting, but like let's keep it simple, guys. You know, that trail line was resistance, and when it broke, it used that trail line as support, right? Pretty much what it is, right? To keep it from being complicated, it just take a minute to identify it because you don't want to just get caught, just you know, what I'm saying, like, um, just drawing things. Um, would you uh, would you say it's similar to supply and demand zones where more price hit is less likely to react? Kind of in a way, yeah. Like, you know, in a way, it's like to a certain extent, if that makes sense. Um, so just going here. So basically, I'm going to do some more examples. But basically tonight, what I want you guys to do is I want you to just go in and practice drawing trail lines, right? Is this a valid trail line that I just drew right here? Is that a valid trail line? What I just drew is this a valid trail line? Yes, right? So that's what I want you guys to do. I want you to go in tonight and I want you to just practice trail lines. Now, what I call this one a trail line, this one right here, this one is a trail line. I will say this one, but this one, what I don't like, um, okay, this one is a little different. I don't really like the price action it did when it held above there. It's kind of a little choppy. I like these like real aggressive moves, but I'm a, this one is a little choppier. I don't really like trail lines that give me like that choppy price action. I want those aggressive moves off like right here. Like, yeah, we had a little bit of choppy there coming down, but pretty much as soon as we hit those trail lines, we bounce clean off of it. So it all just depends.
for homework, I want you to at least do at least, you know, five and then on your own, just practice it because um, we're going to have like a test on like tread lines and stuff where you actually have to draw them and stuff like that and identify like I'm going to just like for the test, you're going to get a clean chart like this, right? You're going to get a clean chart like this and then it's going to say identify three tread lines on this clear chart. You know what I mean? So you got to come in there and actually look for three nice tread lines on this chart, right? Right? So we have one price, boom, boom, boom. We have another one price rejected, 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 broke, retested, rejected. Then we have price right here, bounce, 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 right? And that's how you're, you know, I wasn't trying to tell you how to test, but that's kind of, you know, there it is. We have another miniature tread line right here. Like just get in and just start practicing them, guys. The better you get at it, the better, the more you do it, the better you're going to get. You're not going to get it any good. You're not going to get good at anything until you practice it. About about three to five, at least three to five. Um, do you use patterns forming with the tread line as extra? Yes. Yep. 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 You can use patterns forming with it to make extra confirmation. Like I said, some patterns are going to be like some trail lines are going to be a pattern, right? You know, you can have patterns on it, you know, it could be bear flags, you know, it's, it's all types of stuff, right? For extra confirmation. I wouldn't say there's one thing that I use for confirmation more than the other, but you know, that's just how I go. So let's go look. This is a prime example. Like if you don't understand trail lines, guys, I need you to understand this. Look at this. Look at that. Come, come on now. Look at that. Look at that. Do y'all see that? Are y'all seeing this right now? Look, this is the importance of a tread line. Look at that. Damn. What is that? That is huge. Hold on. $27 to, the, oh, that this move, <laughs> this would have been life changing. This would have changed your life if you understood tread lines. But hold on, let me now let me get into we're gonna learn chart patterns. But can anybody tell me if there's a chart pattern right here? Is there a chart pattern right here? Yep, we have a head and shoulders, right? Let's draw it. Boom, 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 boom. The breakdown. There we go. Right? So it gave us what? It gave us a bearish pattern at the trend line break, gave us more confirmation, right? Somebody asked me what I answered. That's why I said, if you're a breakout trader, that's totally fine, right? You know, if you would have missed it, you would have missed it. Like, it, to me, it totally depends. I'm pretty sure at this moment, I'm pretty sure at this moment, the market was pretty bearish. So taking a break would have been cool, right? If I'm taking a break, I'm going to bounce with you guys. If I'm taking a break, the only time that I'm taking a breakout trade for me personally is if the market is agreeing with a breakout trade, right? If the market is agreeing with a breakout trade, then I would have probably, I mean, I wouldn't have caught this break immediately. I probably could have caught it down here or moved down. But if the market is agreeing with a break, then I would trade a breakout, right? I don't just trade breakout just because, right? If the market, if everything is breaking down, the market look like it's breaking down, spy look like it's breaking down, then I will go ahead and take this trade to the downside on the breakout. But if the whole market not coming down with it and AL just look bearish on its own, I'm going to rather wait, wait for the retest rather than the breakdown. A move like this, I don't know what this was. Oh, this was COVID. Okay. So I'm going to say, I don't know. I didn't know what that was. But I mean, even when we start putting context, you see how the news align with the charts? Right. That's why I be telling people, I don't need to go too much into news. Like, yeah, it's good to know fundamentals. And I'm going to teach you what I know mainly about fundamentals. But the charts are already not in a way like the charts predicted COVID or nothing. But I'm saying if you were to trade AEL, you would have already been bearish on AEL. We had already had a head and shoulders. So, yeah, COVID happened, but we were we would already been bearish in the first place. You know what I mean? So even with COVID happening, we would have already been bearish. That's actually right when COVID happened. Yeah, that was COVID. Um, this is on a daily 
So the bigger time frame, the, yeah, of course, always. The bigger the time frame, the bigger the move, always. So do you make tread lines on all the time frames? I make tread lines on every single time frame. Uh, not really the five minute too much, um, to be honest with you. I make them, really all of these type of trades come from the 15 minute and up. For me, the 15 minute and up is really where my like tread lines and stuff come from. But I'm gonna draw some more advanced ones real quick. All right, so let's get into some more advanced ones. Uh, let's see. Let's look at some ones that I know of. So here go a nice little downtrend, like bounce trade on. Uh, what's this stock? Microsoft. Okay, so let's see if we can find some more, right? So let's go to the hourly. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Like I said, you know, it's all about repetition, guys. I'm not perfect. None of us are, right? So it's all about repetition. Mm. Here go a bigger one. So here go a bigger trend line, right? So we had the bounce, the bounce, and then we had the re break and retest. So we broke and retested it and broke down. That's, uh, I guess, so you could say a little more advanced one. That's not really too advanced. Let's go look at Tesla. I see a lot of them on Tesla. It's like I noticed, like I'm on any time frame, right? It's not, I'm not limiting myself to one time frame. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm coming through different time frames, seeing if I see it. Like I don't, if I don't see it, I don't see it. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. So here go up. I don't really like this one too much. No, nah, I don't really like that one. But it could have been. Oh, I'm not going to call that one. I don't really like that one too much. If it don't look pretty, guys, I don't trade it, right? For me, it has to look clean. I like clean setups, right? So if to me, if it looks a little ugly or a little skeptical, I don't really want it. Like, another way that helps me find these difficult trend lines is if I see – you know, price going down one way, and then I see like a rejection the other way, or like a strong rejection, I kind of look for those points to find trail lines. So like, if I see a strong rejection somewhere, like after an uptrend, if I see a strong rejection somewhere, I'm gonna see if it, if, it, if it was a previous trail line, if that makes sense. You know, I'm not really seeing one. And I, like I said, sometimes you'll be, you'll blow right past them. That's, mm -mm. Not really liking none of these. Let's see. Matrix. Here go a good one. VIX makes a lot of them. So this is a regular trend line, right? So we pretty much had this little trend line and then we had the breakdown, the retest right here. You know, this trade I actually did. I actually took calls here. Um, one day, and we made a lot of money on this day. We had the tread line. We zoom in a little bit. We had the tread line, and then once we broke, I didn't catch the breakout. I took the retest. Once we retested, I signaled everybody to get in calls. Nobody could see why I was saying that. I was looking at the VIX. There we go. Took that trade. I think Tesla had got up like $80 this day. Uh, so that was one way that I did it. Let me find, see if I can find another one. That was a great day. That was like, it was so predictable. Um, trying to see. Um, it'd be kind of hard finding them like on spot. Like you just kind of got to look at the charts a couple of times to really see it. Here go another one. I was able to identify this because like I said, I'm looking for strong rejection points to see if before that it was a trend line. So here we go. We got a trend line. You see how it came back to that trend line, reject it, right? That was another way to see it. Um, did y'all see that one? Did anybody see that one? I don't know if anybody's seen that one. Don't try to just say you've seen it. AMD has a, can you go through one where you start from the daily? 
Yeah, so like like I said, each trail line, I make it every every time frame get their own trail line. Uh AMD. Let's see. Somebody said AMD four hour. So let's see what AMD has. R, let me see. I already have one on AMD. But hold on, let me see if I got a different one. So we have a AMD four hour. Let's see, let's see, let's see. I think that was the one I was trying to draw earlier. The 10 swing high. Was that the one? I, oh, yeah, that was. Yep. That actually why we swung it. Yep. That's there it is right there. Forgot about that one. I've been on charts all day. Yep. That is why we swung AMD. Right. This is why we swung it. If you go back to the charts, we bought AMD off of this, right? We had that break and retest right here. Good job. Forgot all about that. I couldn't see it. Like sometimes I'll be, you know, I'll be having slow moments, right? Uh, somebody give me another one. I think that's one. I, I heard somebody say dash. I actually think dash was one because I played dash today. Why did I play dash? So I'll be having my slow moments. I think we're gonna get a break out of this on dash. But hold on, let me see why I played dash. I think I found one on Dash. Yep, here go one on Dash. There we go. So we rejected, 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 came back, retested. We can fix them up a little bit to make it a little better, right? We came back, retested it, and now we bounced off of it. For anybody that don't think that's a good move right here, if you took the bounce, you took the bounce at 69. Uh, right now, Dash is at 73, right? So. Like I said, it comes with experience and time, guys. You know, you just got to keep practicing them. But I will say when you do learn this, you're able to see things a lot clearer than a lot of other traders because a lot of traders don't know this. A lot of traders just drawing triangles everywhere, right? When you learn how to, like, learn trade lines and use them the right way, you will, like, have way better trades, right? Because, for example, I'm about to show y'all how quickly. Like, I'm about to just show y'all real quick. The reason why I, I stress trend lines, right? Look at this. Let's say that you're a trader that just know about triangles, right? So you're going to draw this. You only know about triangles, so you're only going to draw the, your triangle, right? This is what you're going to draw. So your entry is going to be on the breakout of this triangle, right? Because you only know how to draw triangles. Versus if you knew trend lines, look how... Or like, for example, if, you, if you're if you a triangle trader, which is totally fine, like if you draw triangles, that if that's what you're confident in, that's totally fine. You see how if you are a person that like triangles or just draw them all the time, you notice how you're just now going to be paying attention to dash. Like you're just now going to be getting ready. Like you're not in dash yet. You're about to be in dash. You see that? You see how like you're kind of late to the party versus if you know how to draw trend lines, you will, we were already, we already hip on dash. We were hip on dash at this bounce, right? At 69. So by the time it's up here, we already taking profits. So if it break out or not, it don't matter to us because we've already seen it before. So that's real. the real reason why understanding trend lines is important is because it allows you to get straight to the party, right? You're there before everybody else is, you know what I mean? And that's kind of the advantage of, that's uh, kind of the advantage of trading, right? Because you get in a lot quicker than other people are getting in, if that makes sense. When you're in before everybody else, you it's less stuff that you have to worry about. And then also when people say, Jay, what about context? How do we know to take this trade? Look what we have. What is this, guys? Now, now y'all see what I mean by context. Context. What is this? A falling wedge, right? Or a bull flag, however you want to say it. Falling wedge, bull flag, flag, all of that. They gave you the context. So we had a break out of the trend line, a retest created a falling wedge, and then a break above, right? So I want you to get to understand that when you start seeing things like that, it just, everything just starts flowing a lot better, guys. It's just like, I, I hope people are understanding it now as the mentorship is going by, that when you learn to do things the right way, it just makes life a lot easier.
right? Then the next step will be to actually take the trade when you see it happen, right? Because a lot of people, they see all of this and they still don't want to pull the trigger, right? Pull the trigger, take the trade. You know what I mean? Pull the trigger, take the trade. What else more do you need, right? Then the people that say, well, Jay, I don't, it's easy now that the market is closed. How do you see it when it's open? Well, first it starts with learning it when the market is closed, right? Training your eyes to see it when the market is closed. So then when the market is open, then you will be able to see the things that you see, right? We'll be able to see it. It'll be a lot cleaner, right? But it starts from practicing. A lot of people don't want to practice until the market is open, right? We have another trail line here. Like, I mean, I could just draw trail lines all, all day. Look at that. Look, hold on. What I, before this trail line was made, look at that, right? Look at that. We bounced, bounced, broke down. What did we do? We retested it, gave you another short entry. Now, I took this trade. Any trade that I'd be showing y'all, most of the time I took it. This is a trade that I took when we took dash puts, right? We took it, it worked, and then I think I tried to keep riding it down, and then that wick right there that y'all see right here, this green candle, I can zoom in a little bit. That, that kind of shook me out a little bit. But overall, you know, we took the rejection, made money, and then I tried to reload it. I'm, I'm, I should have just, you know, should have just held or did a better contract or whatever. But that was kind of my first time trading that, so I didn't really know how the contracts move. I should have just held this move. Um, but it's all good. It's all good, right? But um, right there, we had a break, and it retested, and we took another put entry, right? Um, <laughs> it'd be all good on Zoom, doing that. <laughs> yeah, it'd be like that. You just gotta keep practicing. You just gotta keep practicing. It get it get better. But also, hold on, guys. Let's draw another trail line one more time, so you can have more context, right? Do anybody see the trail line that I'm finna draw? Is it a trail line right here in this area? Then the one we we're already in for. They gave you trail lines, gave you two entries. Actually, hold on. That actually, let's, let's make it make sense. If we drew another one from right here to right here, it gave you another entry before the triangle traders. Before the triangle traders, right? It gave you another entry before the triangle traders. Literally, right there. We had a breakdown into the trail line, falling wedge, and gapped up, right? That is the advantage that you have when you learn trend lines. Time on any type of stuff that we just others micro intelligibility in the digital world. Yeah. Okay. Um, any questions on this so far? Like I said, this is going to have to come with practice. I mean, like, I just, you know, I can just show you so much. Like, at, at some point, you're going to have to get on here and just kind of, like, make it happen. Let's see if I can find something. Somebody said HD. Let me go check HD real quick. Oh, that one was, I don't like too much. I don't like that room on that one. Hold on. I don't like the room on that one. Maybe I need to go to a bigger time frame. Let's see. Sometimes, guys, I have my slow moments, so give me a minute. These aren't the easiest things to um, see right off the bat. Here go a good trail. Oh, no. It looked good from a distance. Let me see if I can find that on the lower time frame. Let me go to the 15 minutes and see if I can find that setup. So we have the 15 minute has kind of like the best trail lines. 
that was a decent one. Uh, oh, also a good tip, uh, trading view, tra like identifying trend lines or trading view are a lot easier for starting off. TOS got too much noise. I turn pre-market off as well to identify trend lines. It just make my life a lot easier, right? So here we had a trend line, break down, retest it, reject it, uh, break down here. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. You do have to go in here and play, guys. I can't, I can't trend line the whole S&P 500. You do have to go here and, uh, and uh, find your trend lines. Cause I know y'all, y'all like to hit me with every single trend line in the entire market. I, I look, just go in here and practice. I'm excited to see y'all homework because I, I love seeing trend line homework. Now that's my favorite. Supply and demand kind of annoying, but uh, I love seeing trend line homework. Let me try to do one good more. I want one more confusing one. Uh, what is the one that I took? Mm. Let me just go to a random stock and let's see if we can find a trail line together. So y'all don't think I had this stuff pre, pre yet. I don't have, y'all think I probably already have it pre-planned what I'm gonna show y'all. Here go one on BA. I don't got to pre-plan nothing. I don't have to look at that. I don't got to pre-plan nothing. I'm trying to tell y'all, I can find a trend line as soon as I open up the chart. I don't got to pre-plan nothing. I want y'all to see this is authentic charting, guys. Literally, we had a this uptrend correction, retest, breakdown. I don't come on now. I don't they gonna have look. I don't have I literally just randomly just click BA, right? Y'all see it? Do y'all see this trend line? It's a secondary trend, right? Oh, damn. I didn't mean to answer it for you. I meant to ask, is this a primary or a secondary? Okay, can anybody tell me why this is a secondary trend? Because the prime, okay, good. Because the primary move is the downtrend, right? So that means these small corrections are the, um, you know, the move, right? But yeah, I see what happened. We had that uptrend. We broke down. We retested, and then we take entries on the retest and then ride it down, right? And then the their exit levels are going to be those points where the trend line bounced off at, right? Which should be your already made support and resistance level. So right here, this was support here, support here, broke down resistance here. Then use that same point on that bounce of that trend line here. So then when we broke down, took the retest, our first price target was here, right? Our second price target was the next bounce, which was here, right? Our third price target, which was down here, right? And our fourth price target was down here, right? Actually, let me draw that up a little more because I want to get that touch right there. That was the liquidity grab. So we want to plot that one. So then you see, when it broke down, it ain't going to hit all the targets every time. I mean, it eventually did, but it ain't going to hit all the targets every single time, guys. All right, you get one, two, you know, three, it's pretty good, right? We got all these little corrections that you can get right here. Correction, right? Got another one, breakdown, right? You can also call that a bear flag, right? There's little bitty ways to do that. But once you understand trail lines, you understand it. So overall, guys, there's not really much else I can teach you. Um, you're just going to have to go in and practice this. Like I said, we will have another class over this, so you don't have to worry about it. Hold on, hold on real quick, real quick before we get off. Come on, y'all. Look at that. Another one. I, I don't know what else y'all want from me. I don't know what else y'all want from me. Here go another one. We had a trail line bounce, 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 retested right there and broke down. Right? Here go another one. I mean, we can just go around and draw these all day. They pop up the most on the 15-minute chart. That's why I'll say get on trading view, guys. They look a lot better on the trading view, right? TOS will have you, like, just pulling your hair out. Another one. I mean, we can just draw these all day. This is – but I see why, like, primary trends, because they give you a lot cleaner trades. You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, that's why, I like, secondary ones. They give you a lot quicker, right? You know, once it breaks down, it's pretty much giving you gains immediately. You know what I mean? So. Here go another one. Wait, no, hold on, hold on. 
not the best one, but let me see if I draw it from right there. But don't get into a habit of making them too steep either. Like right here is too steep. Like, yeah, it worked, but this is too steep, right? You just kind of want to keep it at a nice, clean angle, right? Got a nice little breakdown. I mean, you could we could just go draw these all day, right? We could literally, y'all see how many trading. Like you could have made over a million dollars off of going. This is a million dollars worth of plays right here. You have a, I mean, like, look at this. I want everybody to look at this. Like, not even trying to keep talking. I'm just saying, like, when people say, oh, Jay, they're, I, they be ready to force a trade. I'm like, damn, it's no point. Look at this. Look, and these drops are crazy. These are not little, little kid drops. These are grown drops. Like, these are drops that's paying you money. Like, look at that. This drop came from 234 to 211. What is this? 228 to 205, right? 226 to 188. So please, please don't tell me that you don't see no trading opportunity. Look at that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right? We have seven trading opportunities right now. We can have any some more right here, right? Hold on, let's do the let's do the other ones, right? Boom. Look at that. Look at that. Same thing here. Rejection, rejection, rejection. What did that do? We just went over this. What happened? What made this thing cause? What happened right here? What happened right here? A double bottom. Price refused to do what? Price refused to do what? Go lower. It refused to make another lower low, which created a double bottom. What happened? We created a double bottom. We broke out. What was our targets? Our targets was those initial points where we rejected it, right? Come on now. Look at that. Look how it hit on the money. Hold on, let's draw the last one. Let's see if it hit. Look at that. Boom. First target. Second target. Third target. Come on, y'all. Come on. This is nothing but money, free money given out, right? I want y'all to really practice trade lines. Go practice it. Don't complicate trading. Draw the trade line, wait for the right opportunity, and take the trade, right? It shouldn't be that hard. Trading is hard only because of the emotions that come with trading, not because of just trading in general, right? Not because of the charts. Trading is hard is because of the emotions. We're going to get into emotions, but overall, learn how to chart first learn how to look at the charts learn how to read the charts right but hold on hold on i got another one i got another one one more one more because i i'll tell you when y'all learn trend lines you're gonna want to draw them all the time right here go another here go a secondary trend right bounce 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 broke down there we go but we can go all day but I, that's all I'm going to try to do. So hopefully I showed y'all enough examples. I actually trade trend lines, so I'm not showing you anything that I don't use. So whenever I'm making trades, guys, before you ask me, like, I'm always show you why I took a trade. But if I don't answer it right away, guys, go on the charts. 99% of the time, I found some type of trend line. And you see why I trade trend lines. Look at it. Y'all see why I trade trend lines. We literally had all of these trading opportunities. Look at that. We literally have all these trader opportunities. This is why I draw trail lines, right? Literally, trend, I like that. Are we, that's a new thing we're going to put in the chat. Trail line your way to a million. Trail line your way to a million. That's what we're doing. Trail line your way to a million. I'm looking at it. <laughs> I'm looking at BA for now on. It ain't just BA. It ain't just BA. Come on now, let's go to Microsoft. We can go, we can go to any, just we can go to any chart. It don't matter what chart we go to. It ain't just BA. We can go to any chart. Right? We can go to any chart. Look at that. Right? Bounce, bounce, bounce. This is a more advanced one. Rejected here, broke down. Right? It don't matter what, what chart we own. I mean, I ain't gonna lie, BA definitely was a lot cleaner than all the other ones. I will I will give BA that one. BA is definitely a lot cleaner. I will give them that. BA also pays pretty good too, so. 
BA is a lot cleaner. I'm not even gonna lie to you. It is. We're going another one. Break this some more advanced one. Got that bounce right there. Took it gapped up. Uh, like I said, yeah. Okay, maybe BA. I I I let that uh, comment stand. I let that one stand. BA definitely gave us a lot cleaner. But there's other stocks out here that gives you clean. Here go another one. Here go a good one on Microsoft. Secondary. Like I don't think y'all because y'all probably looking because my monitor pretty wide. So y'all probably don't think that these moves are huge, but these are. You know, this gap down came from uh one. Uh, this breakdown came from like 164 all the way until 146, right? And like I said, if we're using those bounce points as our targets, right? You have a clear exit level, right? Look at that. It hit every level on the money. So. <laughs> Here go another good one. I like this one right here. Right, bounce. I'll be trying to get it to touch sometimes though. Let's see if I can draw it a different way. That was pretty decent. You know, you're gonna have to go play around with it. I'm not a chart wizard or nothing. I could just tell you what I know. Right here though, you know, we in this downtrend. The primary trend is a downtrend right here. We actually created a double top. And we're gonna get into chart patterns soon. We created a double top right here. We cannot beat that lower high, right? And we ended up rejecting and gave us a double top. There you go. That neckline is the magnet, but we'll get more into that, right? But um, there you go. That's pretty much it for today's class, guys. I hope you guys learned something today. Um, and I hope you guys start charting tonight. Once you understand, um, uh, tread lines, you will really understand, right? Um, is it better to use use regular candles? But other than that, I will see you guys on Thursday. Yeah, I will see you guys on Thursday for class. Um, make sure that you're going over this. This will be posted tonight. So I'm pretty excited to see you guys tread lines. I want them clean. If I really would prefer if you, um, you know, try to be the cleanest as possible you know i don't really want to see those ugly charts when i like trail lines i like it to be pretty so give me the best trail lines that you can find please don't be using the same stocks that i use try to branch out find different stocks you know go look at build a bear stock you know go look at different things like that um and just you know find some great uh trail lines right like i said the 15 minute i'm not gonna lie to you guys the 15 minute is best for day trades so if you're a day trader and you know that you're a day trader and you're not really wanting to swing trade, I will focus more on finding uh, trend lines on the 15 minute time frame. If you're like a swing trader kind of person or you work a lot and you can't really be on the charts as much, I will focus on finding um, a lot of your trend lines from like the four hour and the daily. If you're a person that kind of like me that can sit at the charts all day, but you're not like as you know, like I like to get up and go places. So maybe you that type of person where you could be on a charge if you wanted to, but you still like to be out, then maybe look for trail lines on a one hour. You have to find trail lines based on your lifestyle. So just do it from that point. Oh, here go another one on Microsoft. Actually, we were just in one, right? Here go a more advanced one right here. You see, we bounced off this trail line twice and then we broke up. So you had two entries here on the bounce. You had the first bounce right here and up from uh 255 to uh 260 so a five dollar move uh pretty much a five dollar move and a seven dollar move gave you two entries on it so don't tell me that you can't find trades where it trades everywhere i'm saying this stuff is addicting when you learn trend lines here go another one here go another one y'all i'm saying it's so addicting it's so addicting when you learn trend lines like here we go Right here, we had a falling wedge into the trail line. No, we didn't. This is not a falling wedge. This is a some uh, ascending triangle. So we had an ascending triangle into the wedge, right? And then we broke up. Like I said, it's so addicting. It's so addicting. So actually, no, this is a wedge. My bad, y'all. This is a wedge. Kind of. Oh, it don't matter. All right, guys. I'm going to let y'all go now. I'm done.